Hey folks, welcome to another weapon guide. This time it's dealing with the Odachi. Now the Odachi in my opinion is very much a heavy weapon, but it can be played surprisingly quickly. If facilitate the identity of the whole like heavy weapon stuff, I look to mystic arts such as Subtle Blade, which increases the key damage of frontal strikes against enemies that are attacking, but to kind of counter this in that it's kind of a slowish weapon in the same way the axe is, you have things like this, Shifting Serenity, which reduces key consumption when performing Waking Winds or Sunset Breeze. Now what are those? Those abilities basically allow you to change from one stance to the next, kind of in a similar way with the Switchglaive, but with the Odachi, this just enables so much pressure. It is ridiculous what you can do with the Odachi in terms of pressure. Pressure against humans is crazy, especially with moves like Twin Moons, as you can see kind of here. Uh, it does The weapon does a tremendous amount of break damage, but it does have tools to really handle all sorts of key damage and moves such as, uh, where is it at? Crashing Waves is particularly good, but in my mind, the Odachi is really good against blocking opponents Anything that blocks gets shredded. But many yokai don't block, but not to worry. With Neo 2, they introduce Bolting Boar, which actually does not only work against humans, but... Oh, come on. Come on, man. I had that perfectly synced. It works against yokai as well. And the number of yokai that it works against is quite remarkable. So let me demonstrate it again in case your eyes didn't believe it the first time. You can parry all sorts of yokai. Now let me just give you a list of some of those yokais that can be parried. You'd be very surprised. Uh, I don't know if this is 100% correct on everything, but these are ones that I have personally parried. There might be more. I've parried a Gaki. I've parried an Engi. Yoki. Ippon. Uh, what else? Abrant Soldier. Uh, Yam uh, Yamanba, I've parried Skeleton Warriors, the big ones as well. I've parried Koroka, Bolting Boar for whatever reason works on Kama Itachi. I've done it on Dwellers, I've done it on Rokurokubis. I've done it on Mitsume Yazura, I've, uh, Namahages, I think I've done it on Tesso, on Yudo for sure. Um, don't really know about any other major bosses. I've done it on Yoshitsune, but I don't know if that's been patched since. Uh, what else? Hiroki, I've done it on... Not Toad, not White Tiger, not the Cart, not Yomi. Done it on Yasha, I have not had any luck with Underworld Soldier, none of the Foxes, not Tate Eboshi. Kanaki Gigi, yes. Uki, yes. Suiki, yes. Ongyoki, yes. Just to give you an example of some things you can parry. You can parry so many yokai, and that changes dramatically how you approach them. I mean, look at the Yoki, all right? Let's bring the Yoki back up again. Shut down his attack. Look how much free time I have against this particular Yokai, all right? That's a huge deal. Being able to shut them down is remarkable. And, it, and you'd think it, you'd only be able to parry, like, their melee weapons for whatever reason, but you saw I parried his foot. And it's pretty neat what I can do. I've got so much free time to instigate all sorts of other attacks. And that's a really, really important thing to keep in mind. So right now I'm just showcasing some things you can do with the Odachi. To really make it feel awesome. And yeah, it's just, it's a really effective weapon. And it's not to be underestimated whatsoever. So yeah, you may have seen the Odachi just being played at a faster speed. And I can totally turn the tides against all sorts of enemies just by being able to parry them. Oh, I messed that parry up there. So let's talk about how all of these things will kind of play together. Alright, so a lot of things were happening there and the parry just helped me turn the tides against the yokai. So imagine doing that against like Ongyoki. Ongyoki has a remarkable amount of downtime. Uh, Suiki and Yasha really don't. They're pretty much just counterattack right away, so you gotta pay attention. But just the fact that you can turn the tide so effectively with a single parry at the push of a button, which by the way, the timing for it is basically the same as Backwave Tempest, is the same as the Phantom Burst 
burst timing, so you get familiar with that, you're good to go. So just right before you feel the attack is going to hit, don't throw it out too early. Be very precise with it and you're good to go. Pretty remarkable, huh? Got all sorts of really cool moves you can do. Oh, screw that up. That's okay. Here, I, I need to reset. All right, let me reset. God dang it! <laughs> let me reset, dude. All right, turn Epone. 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 Come on, man. <laughs> let me reset. Okay, that'll work. But yes. You have an, the ability to turn the tides, but in my opinion, Odachi is really good against humans. I'm going to try to get this enemy in a blocking state just to illustrate how powerful it can be at depleting key. Can do a lot of damage. Can do a lot of break. You've got a lot of flexibility and really punishing opponents. For blocking too much. So really just shred them. Anytime you think you're going to deflect, well guess what? Odachi don't give a single crap. Also, one other thing that gets neglected with the Odachi is its amazing flash attack. Alright, that flash attack is in fact, as you saw, two hits. Alright. Look at that, just two hits. There is a bit of downtime, but as with other flash attacks, you can either use yokai abilities to cancel some animation, or I think I didn't actually cover this in flash attacks videos. You can just dodge to truncate some timing. So yeah, it's pretty beast. Oh, no, I don't want to beat the sword. And you can sequence into stuff right away. You got cool abilities like that that punish enemies that block. Yeah, hey, get out of the ground, buddy. So yeah, Odachi's flash attack is remarkably fast. I mean, every weapon has a decent flash attack in my opinion. Um, some are much better than others for various reasons, but the Odachi's flash attack is probably one of the coolest flash attacks in the game. It's super fast, it's two hits, and does a lot of pressure, so really worth using. But let's talk about other abilities. So the core thing with the Odachi aside from just breaking enemy opponents is simply switching the, the stances so that you can fluidly just constantly keep the pressure up. So let's just give an example. For example, for me in low stance, I like to switch into the high stance abilities using Sunset Breeze. And here's just a couple of tricks to help you f make the weapon feel a little faster. So. In low stance, uh, low stance strongs, right? So Sunset Breeze works on the strong attacks of each weapon. I should actually mention this first. The Sunset Breeze works on the strong attacks to switch in between the stances, whereas the Waking Winds abilities go from quick attacks to strong attacks in different stances. So take your pick. I like to have the Sunset Breeze ones, not so much the Waking Wind ones. Um, I like abilities like Twin Moons a bit too much. But I'll just talk about the Sunset Breeze once at first, so Sunset Breeze works in the after strong attacks. So for example, low stance strong. Low stance strong feels a little slowish. It's not like buff. It's not super slow, but for a strong attack and low stance, it's kind of on the slow side, right? So what I like to do is I actually like to do the dodge attacks because the dodge attacks for the Odachi are reasonably quick. And look kind of cool. Oh yeah, if you do the dodge attack for high stance, you kind of get that like whole flip animation, which is pretty cool. Um, it's a little different just rolling forward. There's also a little bit of a difference in the attacks. I mean, just this is just uh, me nerding out. But if you dodge forward, it looks virtually the same as the second quick attack, and then dodging backwards, and then doing it. Looks very similar to the high stance strong. It's not exactly the same. But it's just there. Uh, whereas the attack for the Odachi in mid stance and low stance respectively looks very similar to the mid stance quick. Just just something to have 
the note. So what I like to do with Sunset Breeze, and since I have it mapped to go into high stance, courtesy of Sunset Breeze Heaven, what I like to do is low stance dodge into a strong, and then I can go with Sunset Breeze into Twin Moons. It's pretty fast, so check it out. All right. Pretty awesome, huh? So I can dodge. Unfortunately, though, there is the risk of me potentially getting blocked because low stance Adachi can get blocked. But assuming I don't get blocked, it's pretty awesome. All right. And courtesy of the Mystic Art, I have reduced key consumption. All right, you, you're done. And also, one thing that really helps me with the Odachi, since I use Sunset Breeze a lot, is I actually have tempered this. Sunset Breeze key recovery. Oh man, it's so nice to get 250 key back if I hit with it. It's so good. And so then I, all of a sudden, I'm not really worrying so much about my key consumption. Um, you can also get an analog for this for Waking Winds, but I don't use Waking Winds personally, so it doesn't really matter too much to me. But, right, your ability to sequence it to other stances and do combo enders from other stances while keeping up the pressure is remarkable. But again, this is not absolutely necessary. It is simply just an extra tool to really make the Odachi shine, and you should use it. But let's talk about some really bread and butter things that you should be using, in my opinion. Twin Moons, you can't go wrong with this ability, alright? The really all-purpose powerful move, um, you could probably just spam that relentlessly. Alright, it's really good for just high damage, high power, break horns, just a good move to use in general, and it's pretty safe to, I mean, you, can, you can't go wrong with it. And so with, uh, this is awkward. Okay, <laughs> that was weird. But with the Sunset Breeze Heaven, if let's say you're in low stance, you don't have to switch to high stance. You can just keep the pressure going. And uh, don't screw up like I did. You can seamlessly just string attacks together. All right, it's pretty rad. Well, let's talk about other abilities, all right? So I have a variety of abilities that sequence into high stance because I find Twin Moon so effective. Oh, come on, Bolting Boar! All right, so you can sequence into all sorts of different stances and you kind of customize what you'd like. No real right or wrong answer. It's just kind of up to you and how you want to play. But I know I like doing this. Well, not that, but I like doing... I like going to Twin Moons, I can't help it. I have so many different follow-up attacks that I like to do, and so it can be really rad to work with. Even something as simple as that, the good pressure play, provided I'm paying attention, which I'm not really paying attention to all of my attacks right now. I actually did something right there, that uh, not the instant I said it, but I actually used something that you may not have uh, noticed. So I did talk about the evasion attacks and how they're generally pretty cool. But the running attacks are pretty good too. So high stance running is actually pretty fast and it's, as you may notice, quite a vertical hit. So you can break a lot of horns with it. Really good attack. Aside from that, uh, I'm gonna save, in my opinion, the best for last. Uh, low stance running is pretty quick. Oh gosh, it's so fast. I couldn't even really get the timing to take the photo mode for it. But it's pretty fast and can hit targets that are on the ground. So don't underestimate the speed of that. It's not what you'd expect. You'd expect Odachi's speed to be akin kind of just like that, pretty slow, kind of standard. You know, you might think, hey, the basic attacks are kind of slow, it sucks. But then all of a sudden you have a running attack, which is reasonably quick. But in my opinion, one of the underutilized ones is the mid-stance running attack. Look at that range, man. Look at that range. Oh, come on. Show me the range! Pretty good range. And it's pretty fast too. 
Here, I'll just show you. You can abuse the range of the Odachi. Pretty fast, huh? You do admittedly have to make sure you're not like at an awkward position with the target. But holy cow, I just broke his guard with that ability. It's a pretty good one. And even just, if you even just use the dodge attacks and the running attacks, you already have a serious edge with the Odachi. Look at that. All of a sudden I'm playing the weapon pretty quickly. Now granted I'm using a lot of key, but that's what I expect from a heavy weapon. Plus, isn't that backflip thing cool? So yeah, don't underestimate those dodges, dodge attacks, or those running attacks. You can sequence it with Bolting Boar. But yeah, it, it that just changes the perception of the weapon as just being a slow one. You have all sorts of other tools that can greatly assist in terms of pressuring human opponents, such as Ground Quake, which, I mean, that did a lot of key damage. But on Connect, it can sometimes just flatten a target. Since I did that grapple, I'll actually show you why that grapple is pretty sick. See, right now I'm just mixing in stuff you guys have I've just briefly taught you. Oh, come on. Hey! Oh, come on. Flatten the target, please. Please. Or just do a lot of key damage. Ground kick, by the way, is AoE. Oh, that was such a poor demonstration of the AoE. Come on. Okay, okay. AoE. Okay, maybe not in that way. You know, it is AoE. I just sucked at it. <laughs> but here, I'll break down the frame so you can see in which way is it AoE. It's not like rumbling earth on the axe. But you can see right there, it does hit an area that's kind of in front of you. So bear that in mind. Pretty reasonable. Pretty cool. But you can hit multiple targets that are in front of you and I find that really handy. But what else is there? So I don't think I've talked about one of the abilities that many players really love using and that is Moonlit Snow Redux. It is remarkably fast with three hits. But there's also Moonlit Snow, which I don't want you to underestimate. I don't use it as much, uh, mostly because it's a power play as opposed to like a speed play, and I love my speed plays more than anything. But Moonlit Snow Redux, we'll talk about first, is super fast. Doesn't do the most damage, but it's super fast! And I see many people spam it because it is fast. But you can see how it's kind of on the weaker side. Whereas traditional Moonlit Snow... Oh, look at that damage. So much more damage. Okay. Baseline, 900, 1100, 14, whatever, okay. Look at that sweet damage. You can set it up. Oh my god, the rewards are insane. It definitely feels like one of those earned abilities. And against humans, either one kind of shreds, but traditional Moonlit Snow is ridiculous. And many human opponents cannot handle all that pressure. It is remarkable. And you may have noticed there's hyper armor with it. So it's really, really, really good. But yeah, it, there's a combination of power plays and certain things that can really assist speeding it up. Also, one thing that the Odachi can do that many others cannot is here, if you take a look at the tooltip, you can send certain enemies flying. So you can, in a way, almost juggle them. And one thing in addition with Retrograde Flow, aside from that, right, so you see the key pulse window, right? It seems kind of late. But you can actually sequence attacks almost immediately if you ignore the key pulse. So check this out. All right. That's retrograde flow baseline. Now pay attention to this. Now I'm going to do the following moves right after retrograde flow. You can do quick attack and then I have swallow swing to mapped into it. All right. 
Kind of have that speed down. All right. Just comfortable with it. Now watch what happens if I do retrograde flow into that exact sequence without key pulsing in between, all right? Didn't that just feel so much faster? All right, let's see if I can do the quick. Yeah, there's like that quick attack animation that happened really quickly, right? It felt so much faster, and that's because I truncated so many recovery frames. And so what you can do with that is now you, you can utilize any of the stand switching abilities, which is pretty cool. So check it out. I'm going to do Sunset Breeze into Twin Moons in high stance. So I'm going to go from mid stance into low stance. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's break it down. Retrograde flow will be step one. Evasion attack times two. Sorry, two strong attacks. Actually, I probably just do one. Um, I'll just do one strong attack and then go into Sunset Breeze into Twin Moons. So here we go. Ready? Watch the relative speed. It's a lot faster than you might think, but I'm sure... Oops. I'm sure that probably blew your mind. Going from Retrograde Flow, doing a quick attack into Strong. Woo! That was fast. And so you can use this with your juggles to do stuff like this. You can just go into High Stance right away. Let's see if I can demonstrate this against an opponent. Alright, so I'm going to try to deplete his key. A good ability to, to just deplete key, um, aside from Bolting Boar, is Crashing Waves. Crashing Waves is reasonable in the key damage department, but particularly good against opponents that are out of key. Oh, and if you don't necessarily knock an enemy up, you will at least knock them back. So I need to get him on low key. Alright, let's see if I can do it here. Oh, I didn't work on that. I should try a different ability. Let's try that again. Come on. Get up. Okay, let's try it again. Oh, I broke his key. I didn't send him flying. All right, come on. Come on. Cooperate. You will cooperate, or otherwise I will spawn you over and over again to make you die. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. Okay, he's out of key, right? Oh, no! <laughs> All right, come on, get up. Come on, get up, dude. Okay, can, can you cooperate, dude? All right. Oh, I got him in midair. You may have seen uh, RB Frosty do quite a lot of interesting things using Retrograde Flow. Um, player Kagero Simaru has also done some very interesting things with the moments that the enemy is juggled up in the air. Um, there's like been all sorts of stand switching where they like basically keep the target in the air and it's really cool. So Retrograde Flow is one of the few abilities that can enable a certain amount of juggles. Uh, juggles are very, very difficult to pull off uh, in Neo 2. So consider it yet another premium thing in which you can sequence combos. Uh, what I like to do, I don't go too hard on the juggles myself. But when I am fortunate to be able to apply a juggle or not even a full juggle, just send him reeling back. Come on. Oh, come on. Just out of key, dude. If I happen to get one, it's usually a treat. Why did I do that? I should have just retrograded flow the jerk. Okay, get up. This should work now. Yeah, I usually like to do the high stance strong just because it's one of the few times I know I'll be able to guaranteed hit it. So it's pretty cool. But you can do all sorts of nifty things. Let's see if I'm fortunate enough to pull off a Tiger's Blade. A Tiger's Blade is just this thing where you do a forward, forward dodge motion. God dang it. Okay, let's try it again. Get that key low. Oh, he's gonna re reel back. Get up! I'm gonna try it one time. One time so you guys can see whether it works. At least for me. Alright, this should work now. No! <laughs> God dang it, dude! Alright, we'll get his key low and then he'll cooperate. 
All right, get back up, please. Oh, I screwed it up. We'll try it again. We'll try it again. Kind of neat, huh? So you can do things like that. You can switch to other weapons, and it's certainly a fun tool, but... I think I'll leave it at that for now. There's still a lot I know I haven't covered when it comes to utility of all sorts of different skills. I mean, Twin Moons is fairly obvious, but what about Swallow's Wing aside from, hey, you create some backflip. There's a lot of cool things you can do with a variety of abilities. There's Imperative Strike. There's, you know, I touch on Ground Quake and the Moonlit Snows. Actually, I did cover quite a lot, but I haven't talked about Crashing Waves so much. I haven't talked about Undaunted, I haven't talked about Thunderbolt, and there's a lot really I haven't worked into the weapon that will really assist you in terms of really being able to maximize this potential. Heck, I didn't even cover Cuckoo's Call, which is an ability that should not be underestimated. I haven't talked about Devastating Rush. I mean, there's a lot of things I have left out. But for now, I want to leave you with the following. Yodachi is very much a heavy weapon that you can speed up and you can pressure opponents mercilessly, all right? So make sure you start incorporating the stuff I've talked about in this guide, but we'll get back to it. Oh yeah, Bolting Boar is awesome. Use it on as many yokai as you can and totally slaughter them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time.